So I'm going to swap now to the other end of the reproductive spectrum, which is perimenopausal depression. So what we've noted is that there's a very high incidence of first onset depression in the perimenopausal age group, that there's a very high relapse risk of depression in women who have a past history of depression in this age group, and the overall rates increase 16-fold. That's from the Harvard Mood Study in uh, 42 to 52 year old women. 16 fold increase is a very dramatic, serious increase. I would add to that that the ABS suicide data shows two groups of uh, increased suicide uh, and the biggest group in our country is men over 85, but the second biggest group of completed suicides in our country is 42 to 52 year old women. I don't think it's a coincidence that this is, this is the same age group that we're looking at with this increased um, depression uh, rates, new and relapse. So um, what a sad state of affairs that um, middle-aged women are the fastest growing suicide um, successful completion. So again, we, we focus on youth suicide, which we need to, because that's any suicide is a tragedy, but let's not ignore this group who are a rapidly growing um, group who also um, have got responsibilities for care of the younger generation as well as the older generation and are often the stalwarts in terms of our health sector and many other um, sectors. So the, the factors here are the declining or chaotic HPG axis functioning, which does begin, the CNS changes begin five years before hot flushes and amenorrhea. Everyone can diagnose menopause once the hot flushes start, but it's actually a CNS change that is the problem here uh, five years beforehand. So uh, the transition um, is diagnosed and, and um, scored on the stages of reproductive ageing workshops. So the straw is a reasonable tool for managing or for, for staging menopause transition. Um, but I think what's really critical is to understand the symptomatology here that, for instance, uh, hot symptomatic is in 80% of all women. So all women go through menopause. It cannot be outsourced or avoided. And of the women who go through menopause, 80% are symptomatic for something. Now that's huge. And of the 80%, um, people who had hot flushes was the minority. The only hot flushes was 30%. And this is what people worry about in terms of the, the signal, um, in terms of the symptom. But when we look at these symptoms, there's a large number of CNS symptoms, particularly depression, insomnia and uh, anxiety. So again, the real issues that many, many women experience are not the hot flushes, but in actual fact, the mental health problems. And the uh, compounding of sleep with depression or compounding poor sleep with uh, irritability is well known, but it is something that actually has functional issues. So um, this is a rating scale that I've developed called the MenOD. It's a rating scale to detect depression in menopause. Um, happy for you to download this and to use it in your practices if it will help you talk to your female patients about a depression that she may be experiencing. There are slightly different um, forms of the symptoms. So the irritability is quite high, um, anxiety symptoms quite prominent, somatic symptoms quite prominent, um, sleep disturbance and poor self-esteem and so on. So um, that's been published in this particular journal and uh, again that, that's for validation purposes. So we know there's an endocrine mechanism involved in this group and we know that there's a hormone neurotransmitter link. So the problem here is that when patients with this particular depression are treated with standard antidepressant medications, they don't respond very well. The, the standard SSRI, particularly the more agitating SSRIs like fluoxetine, can make this particular condition worse. So we often talk about w what is the management strategy here because it's, depression is multifactorial and you know, which way do we go? Do we go with antidepressants or do we go with HRT? You may end up with both, but it really depends on where the patient goes. If she goes to a psychiatrist, she's more likely to get an antidepressant. If she goes to her GP or to an endocrinologist or a gynecologist, she's more likely to get an HRT strategy. So I, I again would stress that just like with um, using the pill in the PMDD strategy, 
you've got more forgiving on, off and um, manipulation with hormones in terms of the actual withdrawal uh, aspects, provided physical health is not an issue. Sleep regulation is absolutely crucial. And many women, of course, have tried natural medicines and psychotherapy. So we uh, do know that antidepressants are commonly used, but the issue is um, that the SNRIs are really problematic in the discontinuity and the issues of emotional blunting, aggression, and uh, of course the well-known problem of tachyphylaxis with um, the SNRIs having a, um, a life of about 18 months of efficacy before the tachyphylaxis hits, and that's about on average. Uh, and, and of course the aggression with, uh, with such things in, as uh, fluoxetine may all be quite um, counterproductive for the patient going through, for the person going through uh, a menopausal transition. Agamelatine again is useful for sleep and agitation.